this is the uh, start of the experiment on the ferro rod. So this is how it started with the amazing bear scare. The Econo Challenge low budget version of the bear banger. So we're going to scare a bear. 10 2. Okay, and with that, I say, let the experimenting begin. I, I think we might have attracted the attention of a few snowmobilers. Oh. Try and get some really good close-ups of the way it looked before any experimentation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the good surface, the flat surface that I've been scraping, to do the test on. Not this side. Okay, 24 hours of this experiment is under our belt, and surprisingly, we already have some activity to report. This is the DEET, still looking very moist, but no reaction that I can detect whatsoever. But this end is proving to be the most disappointing. Absolutely no indication that the powder is reacting with the rod whatsoever. The salt solution has dried out, but you can see right in here, it's definitely reacted with the rod already. I've been talking to a few people, and the suggestion is that we need to add some moisture to this. The experiment will continue looking like this, with the end of the rod now wrapped in a bit of jute twine, soaked with water and some of that powder. Well folks, conducting this experiment has been a bit like watching paint dry. Not very exciting, but here's an update. This is now day seven of the experiment and there has literally been nothing new to report. First the DEET, absolutely amazing, it is still moist and unfortunately showing no signs of reacting. There's the salt, and it is definitely reacting. And here's the powder mixed with water. The water, of course, is all dried out now. And there is nothing, no reaction whatsoever that I can see. Very disappointing. Yes, I think it's time for crushed up match heads. Because I'm not convinced that we have found exactly what ate my ferro rod just yet. At least we can eliminate it as a possibility. So on camera here I'm just gonna pull that one end off there and we'll see what it looks like underneath. And as far as I can see, I know it's hard to see at home, but there is no new damage there at all. Just take a really good look at this surface here now that I've cleaned it off. That's old damage there at the end. Pretty shiny still. Get a couple of Strike Anywhere matches out of the case I normally carry them in. Let's see if we can scrape some of this off here without igniting it. Nice little pile that we'll use for our experiment. And so we'll do the same thing again, this time with a solution of match heads and water on a little piece of twine. And we'll freshen up the salt 
experiment a little while we're at it. So we'll now start the second half of this experiment. Salt water, the DEET, and now sulfur match hit. See what that does. It's uh, day, what, 14 of our experiment. That's 14 days for the salt solution, 14 days for the DEET solution, and 7 days for the match heads. Let's have a look. Now Glockster42 said it was about a month for all that damage to take place if you've watched his video. So, if he was right, we should see something here. So, let's pull this off on camera. Nice and pink and dry. And... And... Nothing. Nothing. Let me clean it up. Okay, that's cleaned off. You might convince me that there's a little bit of discoloration where that touched the rod, but certainly no new damage, nothing that I can see. Well, I must admit, I was kind of expecting that. You see, the salt solution started reacting with the rod almost immediately, as soon as I started putting it on there. But the match head solution, no. And I've been doing a little research, waiting for this to do nothing. Strike Anywhere match heads do not contain pure sulfur. The head of the match is mostly potassium chlorate and a substance that is man-made that we derive from reacting phosphorus with sulfur. So if sulfur is what's corroding the rod, as Glockster42 suggests, then Strike Anywhere match heads would not be the source of the sulfur. We'll have to think about that one a bit more. Now, let's move on to the DEET, because I think it's finally time to call that one. And it looks like we might have been wrong. Oh, look at that. Yep, yeah, we can definitely say that DEET has no impact whatsoever on the rod. Okay, if you were one of the viewers that guessed salt, this is your moment. But remember, we're looking for pitting. We're looking for a reaction that's gouging into that rod. Ready? Pretty nasty looking. It's definitely a textured surface. But let's clean it off and see how it looks. Okay, let's have a look. Without any doubt, a salt solution left on your rod will definitely corrode it. That gray look that you see on camera is pitting. A lot of pitting wherever that salt solution was sitting on the rod. We'll just show you a before of this section. And here it is after. Clearly, salt water will damage your ferro serum rod. That's a combination of salt residue and the rod. As you can see here, it doesn't take much to get it cleaned up and ready to go again. But you can see that the end right near the handle is all pitted from the salt. Nothing where the DEET 
and maybe a little discoloration right there at the end. I'll tell you one thing that I've learned from all of this, that um, these fire steels or ferro cerium rods are a lot tougher than we give them credit. After two weeks of moisture and various chemicals, oh, we're still throwing off a beauty spark. But I don't think we've found what did that. I'm not convinced.